And I'm just let me know if you're on. Five, four, three, two. Hallelujah. Hey, we praise God. We're, we're starting over. We're giving God all the praise, honor, and the glory. And my sweets, I don't know if she can hear me or not. Hallelujah. I praise God and pray that she can hear me. I lift up the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, honor, and glory, God. We thank you right now, Lord, that, that as we continue to teach online, I pray that you can hear me. Hallelujah. It should be on Facebook Live right now. Hallelujah. So click on and just see if it's showing up. God, I thank you for this opportunity to be to be able to be used. God, we worship and adore you, Lord. I don't know why it's not showing up, but I'm just going to continue on. Uh, maybe because I've been on before and it won't let us go. But God, we just thank you for the work, for the teaching of the word of God that's in our hearts right now. We're looking at it live as I see you, Father. I lift up your name. I adore you, I magnify you. No man has seen God, but I see you in my spirit. I feel your presence. I give you all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory, Lord. As we worship and adore you, we thank you for who you are, for what you're doing, seen and unseen in our lives, God. I'm thanking you right now, God, for mercy. Thanking you for healing our land, oh God. Thanking you, oh God, for uh, the change of the government, oh God. Thanking you for saving democracy in the name of Jesus. So we thank you right now, Father, as we are on this broadcast, lifting up the name of Jesus, praying that people can hear the word of God that's going forth, oh Lord, as we exalt your name. And so, Lord, I'm not going to worry about the connection anymore. I'm just going to teach and <laughs> just be glad that I have breath in my body. To those of you that are suffering, that are going on, this message is a word of encouragement for you. I pray to God that it will touch your heart. The title of this message tonight, this is Elder Anton L. Seals Sr. Uh, the message and Elder, An uh, the Elder Jennifer Nelson Seals, she's not on live with me today, but that's my lovely wife. And we thank God for you, uh, my sweets, and uh, well, all of you that have been so supportive to AJS ministry, Anton and Jennifer Seals ministry. We are teaching praying ministry. We're not a church uh, where we love God and just want to continue to serve. And so God, in the name of Jesus, this message tonight is launching out to go deeper, to draw closer to God. The title again is to launch out, go deeper, seeking the more of God, because it's where you find your relationship with God in the midst of your tra travails, in the midst of your troubles. Uh, he makes us, uh, the, the scripture tells us that, that when we're weak, he strengthens us. He'll show up. When we empty out of self, the Lord will always show up. The text this morning are several, but we're going to start off with Luke 5, 1 through 14. Actually, 1 through 11, but I, I wrote off, I was copied off 14 verses. Uh, Jesus uses Peter's boat, and then he tells Peter to launch out into the deep. It caught my attention. I, I was listening to some other pastors teaching on this. There's nothing new under the sun. Sometimes you can hear something different and, and it'll touch your heart. And so I was going to teach in another vein and the Holy Spirit just worked on me this evening and said, no, I couldn't even get on when I wanted to get on, brother. So sometimes you got to wait on the Lord and be a good courage. In the midst of the storm, don't lose faith. Don't lose sight of what God is doing. Keep your eyes on and your mind stayed on God through Christ Jesus. And Luke 5 reads in, in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. So there was a desire for the people. And, and I'm talking through the scriptures I teach. There was a desire for the people who, who had a heart for God to seek the more of God. They weren't, they weren't satisfied with just a little bit of God. They weren't satisfied with just uh, going to church to be entertained. I believe that's why God shut all the churches down because we don't worship God. We we come and worship the beauty of the building or just the church or the, it could be a storefront church. And we put more uh, emphasis on everything else but God. Maybe, maybe too many of us have taken God for granted. 
I can't read God's mind. No man knows the mind of God. Why would God allow all this to happen? But I believe that all things work together for the good. That's his word. For those who love the Lord are calling to, for, according to his purpose. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to see that God is saying that, that they came to see. I taught a lesson that was called "Come, the four chair of discipleship. Come and see. Come and follow. Come, I'll make you fishermen and men of men and then send you out to produce more fruit, make you a disciple maker. I'm going to teach that some more. I'm going to teach you on prayer coming up in the next uh, month. But I, I just want you to God chases. That's what I'm talking about. People, this is for people that really, who are struggling for whatever you're going through. It doesn't matter if you saved, unsaved, God got a word for you. God is speaking to the world today. He's shutting everything down. And so in the midst of all the work that Peter had been doing, he'd been fishing all day and all night. And, he, and Jesus saw the two ships and said, let me use your boat. And so he asked Simon to cast a little bit further out. So you get away from the press of the people. Sometimes you got to get away from people. You've got to fast and you got to pray so God can empty all that gook out of your system, out of your mind, so you can hear the voice of God. So in that time that he kind of pulled away from the press so that he could sit down on a boat and speak to you. Well, you're a sheep of God. You're the lamb. He's a shepherd, the lamb of God who gave his life for you and I. But he calls us the sheep and the sheep know his voice. So what is he telling us in this lesson is that I, I want to use you. I want to I want to take you to a place you've never been. I want you to launch back out to the deep. Now, Peter's been a fisherman, so he knows about the area. I used to go fishing with my pops, my grandfather, uh, Lawrence Tanzel. He, he, he was a bad old boy, man. God took him home at 88 years old, 87. <clears throat> but it was a beautiful thing to, to watch him. He knew where to go fish at. He, he knew where the fish were going to be. And he always told me and my brother Walter and Bernard and I, sit down in the boat and don't rock the boat. And when you throw it, he taught us how to hook the fish and everything, the, the, the little minnows and how to throw it out or put some bait on it. And sure, he taught us all of that. But you had to be still. And so I'm asking you to be still tonight and listen, that you might be encouraged that in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of all that's going wrong, you've done everything. And, and he says, and he entered into the ship, which was Simon's, and he prayed and he said, thrust out a little more because I want to teach. I'm going to sit down and teach you some things. I, I want the people to hear the word of God, he said, and I need to pull away and I need to use you. I need your help is what he's saying. And he said, I, I pray that, but he was really commanding him in the spirit realm. God wasn't just asking you. He's, he's letting you know when he speaks to you, he wants you to do it. But you got to hear his voice. And the more time you spend with him, the more time you hear his voice. And so now when, when he had been speaking, he said that when he finished speaking, he left speaking, he said, verse 4, and we're in Luke 4, uh, 5, 4, and 4. We're in Luke 5, verse 4. Now when he finished speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down the nets for a drop. And, and Simon answers, but master, that's like you and I, we just, you've done all that you can do. You've prayed, you pay your tithes, you've been faithful, you, you've sacrificed everything you can and nothing seems to be going well. All of a sudden, all the, you were getting ready to get a promotion and you lost your job. You're getting ready to get a new job and it didn't come through because of the pandemic. Over 900,000 people are unemployed. Over 400 plus thousand people have died since last year. This time today marks the one year that uh, in America, the first case of, of the virus called the COVID-19 pandemic showed up coronavirus showed up and because we wouldn't wear a mask 400 plus thousand people have died the world is wax cold that you saw anyway 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 now when he had left speaking he said simon i want you to launch out but master i've done all that i can do you ever done all that you can do and you feel like god what is it what what why are you allowing me to go through so much stuff 
I want you to know that when it says put on the whole armor of God, that armament that you put on, it had to go through some fire. So if you're really a man or woman of God, a, a young man, a young woman, a teenager, a child seeking the more of God, because God can use anybody he wants to use at any period of your life and understand that when you go through the travails of life, because they're going to come, it is the it is those travails, the fire represents the purifying. Because It's just like when you fast and pray, you, you go through some changes when you fast and you got to empty out. It's a hard press to do it because you got to empty out of self. You got to sacrifice. And that's what God calls us to do when you're sacrificing. He don't just want your tithes and offering. He wants your heart, your mind. He said, love me with all your heart, mind, and soul. Matthew, I think, 22. But he tells you to love me with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then he tells us to go and, uh, and teach all and uh, all nations and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, and, and spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. God is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit is with you. You are the candle of the Lord. So let, let's get into this. And he says, Simon, cast out. I've taught all night, he said. But nevertheless, I'm going to tell you, I didn't feel like broadcasting earlier today. I didn't feel like wanting to do anything else. I felt like, God, I've done enough. And I, I don't know what else to do. But just at 70 years old, sometimes you get to the place where things don't go the way you want them to go. You could be 20 and things didn't go the way I wanted to go in college. I had to work so hard to get through college. And, and, and I made it. Don't know how I made it, but except by the hand of God. And I wasn't nearly where I am today in my relationship with God. But I yet still fall short of his glory. And when they, had, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. He told them to drop your net. Sometimes you can fish on the wrong side of the boat. Sometimes you're in the wrong place in the water. But if you listen to the spirit of God, this boat and this fishing represents your life. It represents where you get when you obedient to God. See, when, when he came and asked him, can I use your boat? He, he said, I pray you, you, you let me use your boat. I want to cast out. When God is speaking to you, he's not going to give you long sentences. He's not going to give you all the definition. He's not going to tell you where to turn right or left. You got to discern it in your spirit. That's why it's so important to spend some time with God. So while they were out there fishing, and they had done this early, they had cleaned their nets. And he's like, God, are you serious? That's where some of you are. God, are you serious? You want to make me sacrifice some more? You, you want me to help somebody else? I can barely help myself. He, he didn't say don't, don't eat. He just said share what you got. The widow's might reminds me of that. She didn't have a whole lot of money, but she gave what she had. The, the, the widow who was about to die, and we studied the book of Samuel, you'll find out Elijah, he came to her and said, uh, fix me a part. She said, this is all I got. But yet, nevertheless, she made him apart. She shared what she had. And do you know the rest of the story? So that the, the net was overflowing with fish. To see, there's a miracle in this that's coming out of all of this. We can see the miracle that God has already shifted the way the government is going to look. If God is moving. I used to pray and say, Lord, when you turn this around, raise us, raise up people who have a heart of God that aren't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, call on your name. And that young girl said that let that light that be in you, let it be you. Let you be the light that's shining down on the inside of you, that young 22-year-old girl. I can't remember her name. I didn't write it down. I wasn't going to plan on saying it. But she gave a powerful uh, rendition of going through and coming, through, coming up the hill, climbing up the rough side of the mountain but god gave you hands feet that ain't him i know he gave you hands feet he said he said i i will bring i'll make the narrow road broad i'll take the crooked road and make it straight i'll move your mountain with you have faith the size of a mustard seed and when they had done this and closed a great multitude of the fish and then knit nearly broke and they beckoned to the other fishermen, the other partners. See, they came to Peter and they helped out, which were in other ships. And they came and they helped fill the boats, fill both ships, so that they began to sink. God will pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive, but it won't come just because we ask for it. It requires a sacrifice, and greater than the sacrifice is our obedience 
to a life of prayer, of studying words God, of loving God and loving your neighbors, loving your children, loving your wife, loving your family, loving other people. Have a love of God. He said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Oftentimes, we don't know how to love ourselves unless you have that intimacy with God. This natural mind cannot conceive of what God has for you. But that's why you are put in this, this tabernacle of flesh, this meeting place that you have. It's a sacred place that you can enter into through prayer and quiet meditation. Some people don't even have Bibles, but they, they believe because they've heard of the Messiah. They've heard of God. They, they, have, they have experienced through tales and stories down through the years and centuries of the power of God, something quickened in that spirit. Some people can't see, some people can't hear, some people can't write, some people can't do any of those things, can't even talk, but they can feel the presence of God. And Peter was obedient. He's the same Peter that in the midst of the storm. And he said, Jesus, if that's you, because the rest of the disciples were scared on the boat. Hold up, what is this walking on the water now? In the midst of the storm, Jesus says, show up. Don't be afraid. He said, fear not. Trust me. But if Jesus, if that's you, tell me. And so he stepped out. Step out in the midst of this storm. Step out into the darkness because the light of God is shining. He said, I'll, I am a light into your path, a lamp into your feet, and a light into your path. I'm going to show you the way, even in the midst of the darkness, because the darkness can't consume you, the light of God that's in you. Now, when he was speaking these things, he tossed his net, and he believed God because he obeyed. When God told him to step out, and roll out so he could sit and teach. God was setting him up in the midst of the storms of your life with the waters. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And when they had finished and they recognized what was going on, that the boats began to sink. Verse uh, six, seven, uh, eight says, when Simon Peter saw what had happened, he fell down at the feet of Jesus, bowed down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought, at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also was James, here, here the other disciples. They, they, they wanted to see now. They wanted to come find more. So they moved from a place of just coming, but they've been following Jesus. They saw the miracle of the water changed into wine. And now they're seeing another miracle. And if you study the rest of the book of, of Luke 5 in this chapter, you'll see more miracles of the lepers that were cleansed. But so I want you to know that God is speaking to us to cleanse us, to heal us, to deliver us. So Simon saw it and fell. Do you bow down and worship God? Do you recognize that he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and beside him there is none other? Are you astonished at the miracle working power of God that he brought you through, that in spite of all the deaths that's going on, and even in families and friends and neighbors, co-workers, hundreds of thousands of people, 400 plus thousand people have died, have died, and more are going to die. And more will die unless we put on a mask, simple as that, out of love and respect, because God is asking us to love your neighbor as yourself. Love yourself enough to cover up and take care of your own health. And so I want to go on and where it says that, 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 and the sons of James, and so also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. See, God wants us to lead people to him. We cannot save them. But, but the light of God that shines in you, the hope of God that's in you, that faith, faith cometh by hearing the word of God. But it ain't just in your ear. It's not just in your mind. It gets down inside your soul. It gets down inside that spirit realm of who you are. And it connects with the quickening of the Holy Spirit. You can open that Bible and read it all day long. But if you don't catch and to dig into it, if you don't open your heart to it, if you don't believe it, it will not come alive because the living word is a living 
living word. It's the God, of, it's the word of God that was given to man. And the same commands that he gave to Peter, he's given to us. The same way he taught the disciples, he's taught us in the Bible is to love each other, to be encouraged. And so when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all, they forsook everything. Are you willing to give up the pleasures of your life to follow Jesus? Are you going to be like a deer that panteth after the water? See, we talked about going into the deep. Now we're in uh, Psalms 42, 1 through 11. And, and deep calls into the deep. And what does that mean? Trouble draws more trouble. Pain, oftentimes you experience pain at different levels, at different times of your life. But you're going to experience something. The pain may not come from the toothache. It may come from a dislocated shoulder. It may come from a hip or sciatica. It may come from kidney. It may come from cancer. Whatever that is, the deep, the struggles, the afflictions, the infirmities and sickness of our lives, it's coming. It's going to be there. How you handle it is in your relationship with God. Listen to what Paul says in Psalm 42. As the deer panteth after the water, so my soul panteth after thee. So panteth my soul after thee, God. Oh, God, oh, God, my soul thirsteth for the more of God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? When, when shall I come? Lord, when can I come and meet you? Where can I meet you? Lord, would you allow me to come into your presence, oh God? I know you're already there because you're always omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent. Your omniscience, power, and glory, you're all around us. It even says that know that I am not, that you're never alone. My tears have been my meat day and night. In other words, I've cried so much that it tastes like, it tastes that was, that's what's feeding me is my tears, my sorrow. I was drowning in my sorrow. But the Lord quickened my spirit when I called on his name. And while they were continually saying unto me, where is thy God? See, sometimes your friends and neighbors, your family, they'll mock you because they don't understand the change. They don't see and understand how that same man who was a cussing sailor is now a man who doesn't like to be around that kind of, there's not around that, there's not his normal behavior anymore or her behavior anymore. Or that child is shifted as a move, as an epiphany that God has moved something in your life. He's changing you, become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, all things pass away and all things become new. In the midst of your storm, you can't put on the armor of God and think you're not going to go through the fire because the armor represents in order for it to be strong, in order for the shield of the breastplate of righteousness to have the strength that it's supposed to have. It's not just putting it on. It's understanding that the fire that you go through, the tempers that, that makes you stronger, that no matter what you're going through, the hate that comes at you, it won't take you away. It won't make your mind crack. It won't make you evil and bitter and resentful doesn't mean that you don't experience some things, but God will deliver you out of all of your wickedness and your evil that's in your natural mind. In the natural mind, where there's no good thing in this, this wicked and deceitful is the mind of man. And But yet down on the inside of you, there's so much agape love of God. So much power, so much quickening, so much light that needs to be shed in the world. That God is speaking to you and I and my tears. And they laugh and say, where's your God now when you lost everything? Remember, Job said, have you tried my faithful servant? God told Satan, he's walking around seeing who he could sift as we. Sifting, sifting. I, 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 did, I could tell a story about that. You see my mama and shifting flour back in the day. But, but the story goes on. And when I remember these things, I poured out my soul in me, God. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down? Why am I cast down? Oh, my soul, be ye lifted up. But he says, oh, my soul, why art thou disquieted in me? Hope, darling God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. No matter what I'm going through, in other words, what he's saying in, in Psalm 42 and 5, I'm still got my hope in God. I'm holding on to that hope that is the faith of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, that hope of believing that God is going to make a way out of me because I know that his word spoke to me and said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I'm going to strengthen your heart. I'm going to pour out a blessing. I'm going to open doors. I'm going to give you wisdom and knowledge beyond 
beyond your understanding, open some door. Godly, I'm going to establish you to do some great works. People of God, you have to go through the fire in order to get stronger in your walk with Jesus Christ. The world has seen what this America could do. It knows the sin of this world, but God got his hand on America. God spared all of those people that were in the chambers, in the, in the capital. It was God that put a hedge of protection, but he showed us the ugliness of the world and the hate of man's heart, and then he delivered them and showed us the grace and the love. And we pray for that young man who died and pray for those other four who died, that policeman, the capital police, all of them were set up by the government, by people in power in high places. God sees you. God knows what y'all have done wrong. You can't escape what God is, is seeing and doing. You're not going to get away with it. Nothing we do, we, there's a consequence to everything that we do. He said, deep calleth into the deep. And I got curious about this deep calling to the deep. And this is verse 7, Psalm 42, deep calling into deep. deep. Psalm 42 and 7, deep calleth into deep of the noise of the water spouts. All the waves and our billows are gone over me. You ever been on a boat and, and the storm come? I've been there with my pops, and the, but he had a way of knowing how to navigate that boat to ride that current so that we could get back to the shore safely. But it was a frightening thing. I can only imagine as I watched the, 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 the TV series about these men out there fishing and the storms come and they're riding these waves up and down and tossing to and fro. That's what life does to you, brothers and sisters. It'll turn you upside down all around, have you all confused. But if you hold on to God's un change and word. Come and know your father for yourself. You, I can pray for you all the day long, but I can't get you to be saved. I can't save you. I can only lead you to the throne of Jesus. I can only ask you to trust the words that come out of my mouth, that the God wants to use everyone that's on this line, everybody that hears this message, everyone that's going through. He's not forsaken you. He allowed you to go through. He allowed everybody that's going through some stuff. God says, have you tried my faithful servant? Put your name in that line. I mean, remember the story at the end, though, when God comes back to Job and tells him to pray for his, to his friends. Can you pray for those who hate you? Can you pray for those who, who know that you can be used of God but won't allow you to be used of God? Can you pray for those who mis, mis, just persecuted you for no reason just because of the color of your skin? Those who persecuted you, rejected you just because you knew something and had a, a spirit that they could, could not receive. You don't fit into the group. You don't fit into the mix. It's okay. You're not alone. It's just a season of going through. All things do really work for the good. You don't get to really know God without going through some trials and some tribulations. So the deep is where you meet God. That's, that's, where, that's where your faith is tested. That's where you, you learn to let go and have to trust him for no weapon that's formed shall prosper. He didn't say the storm wasn't going to come. He didn't say the troubles weren't going to come. He said, no weapon that's formed shall prosper. And every tongue that comes against you, listen to what it says. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. Listen, listen to that. I, I want to read that one more time. Yet the Lord will command his, when you're praying, Let's, let's read the scripture. In the midst of your storm, deep call up to the deep. You've been, you've been tossed and turned, and, and you're, at the, you're at a place where the anchor doesn't hold. Only thing left is, is your trust in God, your trust in your walk with Jesus. The Lord will command his loving kindness. See, in your prayer life, in your time, your personal time, with your sincerity of heart, not going through the motion, not just because you're on the prayer line and you're drinking coffee and you ain't got that. And I had to stop drinking coffee when I'm on the prayer line, stop eating breakfast. So everybody can't do that because I know you're going to work and you got to eat and you got to, but find some sacred time for God, some sacrifice time and, and, and pull close because he says, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness. See, his kindness is already there. 
because you were made in his image and his likeness. And so because you're made in his image and his likeness, all of this is already given unto you. You just got to understand how to tap into it. For his word is truth. His word is true. His word is righteous. Why? Because God is truth. God's word is true. And it shall not return it to him void. He is the judge. So he is the judge who decides the righteousness of man. He, he, he sets a standard of being right, of understanding how to live morally and spiritually and being led and fed by the spirit of God, that you can feel the loving kindness in the midst of your storm. Sometimes you'll see people that have been through so much and you don't understand how they can keep coming back. How they, they see to African American people, let me say something to all of y'all. To anybody, to, to anybody's community, to anybody's national, if you know to the American and indigenous Indians, all the hate that you went through, God knows. And I thank God for the woman who just been elevated over the Department, I believe, of Interior as the Secretary of Interior. God is moving. He said he's going to raise after every storm. There's a rainbow. I see a rainbow of people in the White House. That ain't in my nose. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's a rainbow of people of colors and nationalities. In spite of one government and leadership that's saying they hate it, God is raising it up in spite of you because God's going to hear the prayers of the righteous. And listen to what he goes on to say. That I, the, in the night, a song shall be with me. That's, the, that's when God will comfort your heart when you go to sleep praying and meditating on God. And, and sometimes I, I really struggle with sleep. I, I really do. But, but, but God is saying to us in the struggle of your sleep, allow me to speak to you. Keep calling on my name. Keep trusting me. Loving kindness day and night. And my prayer unto God is for my life. I pray, God, have mercy on me. Let me hear your voice, Jesus. Let me hear. Let me hear your presence. Let me feel your presence, God. Quicken me that I can go on, that it ain't over. In spite of what it looks like, in spite of the storm, in spite of the billows raging all around me, in spite of all the things I've worked so hard, God, I don't feel like I've accomplished anything. I've lost so much. I know what you feel. I've been there. But only by the grace of God do I sit here tonight to tell you that he'll speak to the storm. And he'll do you just like Peter. He'll say, come on to me. And when you take your eyes off of, off of God, because all of us fall short of the glory of God, but he's given us the example with people. Peter, he said, well, when you, when you take your eyes off, you start sinking. Then in the midst of the storm, he reaches out. God reaches out. To, he's reaching. He's reaching out. He's reaching out. He's reaching out to you and I. He's reaching out to the whole world saying, return unto me and I will return unto you, America. You're not America just because you chose to be America. Some of you don't understand that there ain't but one God. I don't care who you worship. I mean, it still calls for us to love one another and not hate each other the way that we see it in this world. And when God is moving the way he's moving, you need to get on the good ship of fellowship with God because <laughs> he's, he's going to have his way. There's a, there is a redemption. God is redeeming his position and his place, not his, his position. He's already high and mighty looking down. He sees, but he's elevating people. He's opening doors of opportunities in this pandemic. The remnant of God is coming forth. There'll never be another Azusa, another powerful move of God in my lifetime. We'll get to see it together. And so he goes on and he says, wilt thou not cast down? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall praise him. See, praise breaks the yoke. Who is that? Who is the health of my countenance? And my God, my God is. Even in, in John, uh, 3 John, King, uh, 3 John 1 in the King James Version says, the elder unto the well-beloved Caius, 
whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things, brothers, sisters, in my closing comments, I wish above all things, above all things that thy soul may prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. Let me read that again. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health and be in health. And so he's saying that, that if, if you're going to be in health, your health is not dependent upon you. It's depending upon your soul prospering in the things of God, in the, in the, in the, in the eating of the word and the drinking of this water that you thirst no more. It's the move of God. It's the hand of God. It's the love of God. It's the presence of God. It's the holiness of God that cleanses us from our unrighteousness, that gives us a forgiving heart, that takes the moat out of our eyes, that changes our language and how we talk and how we treat people because he reconditioned our heart. And so, God, I thank you for this lesson tonight. And I pray to God that somebody gets something special out of here, out of this message, for I rejoice greatly. When the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. God wants us to walk in the truth of his word, for he is the righteous king. He is the judge that set things right. He's a judge that knows the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the God who says to John, tell the churches that in my hand are the seven stars, the seven angels, the stars. And, and I walk in the midst of the candlestick. <laughs> and it goes on. You can read it later. I'm going I'm to teach that next week. Next Monday, I'm going to teach that. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on air Thursday, but next week I'm teaching that. It says, walk around in the presence of God. He said, I'm walking in the midst of the candlestick. That's Revelations 1.13. You can check that out. See, the seven stars represents the church. It represents the churches that were established in Asia, the spreading of the gospel. The church represents the stars. The angel of God represents the pastors, the ministers. But I want you to know that that candlestick, is, it represents you. That's the body of Christ. See, the, the tabernacle is the house of worship. And so the first thing he put in the tabernacle, when he made the tabernacle, it was dark. And so the only light that was in the tabernacle was the menorah and seven candles. And the main stem had branches and bowls that were filled with oil. And he said to tell you tonight that I've called you first, uh, Revelations 1, I think it's 4 or 5, somewhere in there. You can look it up. And he says, I made you to be kings and priests, to manage over your family, to be a, the, the man and woman of God, the people of God, the children of God that lead others to Christ. For I have made you in my image and my likeness. I've given you all power and you can do all things for Christ Jesus according to the power and the strength that worketh in you because it's him that's working in you. Go deeper. Let go of some stuff. There's nothing too hard for God. Whatever you're struggling with, fast. This is one of the hardest fasts I've been on in my life. Why? Because it's not just dealing with not eating. None of them are. It's about sacrificing. It's dealing with the, the attacks of the enemy that's in the world that you can feel it. And he wants you to have a heart that, that represents his presence. He wants you to spread the love of God. The sacrifice that Jesus made, that if you want to reign with God, if you want to walk with God, if you ever want to get home with God, you got to understand what it means to sacrifice time, talents, and treasures, to give back to God all that you can to lead others to Jesus, to have a heart that says, I love you with all my heart, God. Here I am, God, send me. Hey, God, can you say, God, here I am. Help me. Deliver me, God. 
Hear my cry, God, for the people of the world. If my people who are called by my name, and he wants you to humble yourself. Can you, can you sacrifice and bow down and worship my God, my Lord? Jehovah God, Emmanuel God who covers you, the God that's with you, the Messiah who, who was prophesied that he was coming. And when he came, he didn't come to him. That's another story. But when he came, after 400 years of silence, God didn't speak to the kings and to the government. He spoke to people like Black Life Matters and, and white and black and brown people who organized to get the vote out because they stood up for righteousness. And God is rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I believe that even though they tore down the mail system and tried to corrupt the system and spread lies, and, but God raised you up out of the miry clay, snatched you out of the brine and iron, so he turned your life around all for the glory of God. Ah, the earth of the Lord is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwelleth therein for he had founded it. He founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in the holy place? He hath chosen clean hands and a pure heart. Is your heart clean? Is your hands clean? Have you been praying? Have you been worshiping? Have you been adoring? Have you been obedient? Have you been sacrificing? Have you been helping? Have you been loving? Have you been caring? Have you been thoughtful? Hallelujah. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord, those, he said, who have clean heart and a pure heart, clean hands, pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul into vanity. Lord, not, not for my pleasure. But God, please get the glory. Get the glory out of everything that we do. Bless over our children. Bless over our families. Heal our land. Bless over the praying women of God, especially my wife. I lift her up. She's an awesome woman of God that, that has retired and, and has given her time to the church. And she's still praying and leading prayers and still going. And, and in small numbers, they show up in teams to help the church. She's still teaching on Sunday school. She's leading prayer and being a part of prayer five, six, seven days a week. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you what it takes. I'm telling you that even I fall short of the glory of God, but I love God. And all I'm trying to do is to encourage you through your storm. And if you're out of your storm, be mindful and kind to those who are going through because they may be short patient and all they need is someone to have a nice, kind, thoughtful word to encourage them. It's you. Let the love of God come out of your heart. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee is my closing prayer. My soul thirsts for thee. I'm like a deer that panteth after the water. I cry out for the water. I'm searching for that, that water of God that he said, drink of this water, you thirst no more. For my flesh longeth for thee. I'm in a dry place, O oh God, because our house of worships are closed. So I listen for the music of worship, of pure worship. You've given instruments to men and women with their voices, with their instruments that are truly worshiping you. We used to laugh at church online, but now we're all turning to church online, but you got to hear the spirit of God. So I ask you, don't just be satisfied with listening, be satisfied with discovering the voice of God for yourself. And he'll let you know that you're in the right place. He'll guide you through every storm, He'll fill up your nets. God has a plan for you. That plan may not make you rich, but it'll give you a peace that passeth all understanding. It may pour you out some blessings, may give you some favor, may heal your marriage. Whatever God decides to do, he can do. All those things I just mentioned, he can do them. And I'm a living witness. Because I've 10 years, I've sat in so much pain. As I close, I tell you, thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm not on all this medication anymore, that I desire to be totally healed from every ailment in my body. And I'm praying for everyone that's going through a storm, whatever your storm is. I understand it may not be like mine, but if you've ever experienced pain and suffering,
your heart should go out to those. Let us pray in the name of Jesus, God. Heal our land. Heal the brokenhearted. Heal those that uh, I'm, I'm, I can't even get to bury their parents or their loved ones or even a friend. Because the, the, the funerals homes are start storing bodies in freezers and hospitals are putting bodies in freezers outside the buildings, oh God. Lord, we hear you. Have mercy upon your people, God. Have mercy, and I thank you for the blessing of the Lord. I thank you for safekeeping, oh God. I thank you for traveling mercy for all of those that are the essential workers. I lift up all the nurses, all the doctors. I lift up all the clerks that are at the desk taking the names down of all the 600, 400,000 people that came through the hospital with millions of more infected by this disease, this pandemic, God. But you said none shall come nigh thee, that you would deliver us out of it. So I'm believing that in the midst of this, this pandemic, that God is lifting you up. He's healing your heart. He's drawing you closer to keep your faith in God. Don't turn away from him. Draw closer to him. If you're going through mental stress, mental illness, ask God to continue to help you. Change your diet. Take your medicine. Pray. Ask God to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. An old man pass away and all things become new. And believe it in all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. And let God have his way with you. I pray for America. I pray for the world that we worship and adore God. We magnify his name. We glorify who he is because he's all that we have. If it had not been for the Lord, where would we be? He saved a wretch like me to come tell you. I'm nobody special. Just a servant who loves God, who wants to help lead people to, to thirst the more for Jesus, that you too may experience the blessings of God that keepeth thy mind in perfect peace, that will bring you through the storms, take you to places you've never dreamt, give you a peace that passeth all understanding, give you the joy which is the strength of your heart, your life is the strength of God in you. So I pray that you receive this word of launching out because you're already in the deep. If you're not in deep trouble, you will get there one day. It's part of life. There's always pits. There's always valleys. There's always crooked roads. There's always the unexpected. Life is not always fair, but our God knows how much you can bear. And with that, I say, praise him. Don't doubt him. And even if you do, he'll forgive you. But keep calling on him. Draw intimately and inwardly to the deeper places with God. Discover who you are in him and whose you are and what is his, his purpose for your life today. May this be a blessing to your life, to your family, to whoever has ears to hear. Know that God is working it all out for his glory. Stay tuned. This is Elder Anton L. Seals and Elder Jennifer uh, Seals, Nelson Seals, but Seals. We thank God for AJS ministry. I'm, I put the Nelson on there to, to recognize all of her children. I recognize all of my blended children, Tyler and Verlaine. I lift up James, lift up Jermaine. I lift up every one of the children that are in this family. Jasmine, Jackie, Josh. Anton Jr., Aaron, Shaman, seniors, junior, all of your children and grandchildren, I bless God for all that you're doing. And so, Verlina Tally, if I didn't mention you, God bless you again. Hallelujah. None of you are ever out of our hearts. We don't miss uh, Jessica. We love you with the love of Jesus. We bless over you as the oldest daughter that God is doing a new thing in all of your lives. Be encouraged. Keep holding on to his unchanging hands, to my daughters and daughter-in-laws, to all my our grandchildren, all of you, to all our daughter-in-laws, 
to all the grandchildren. God bless you. To all the children of the world, God have mercy on them. Love you with the love of Jesus. Good night. Love you. Be on next Thursday. Our, our normal time was going to be seven. I moved it to eight because of a conflict with other scheduling. But we'll send more information out. I know I'm late today, but God bless you. I pray this has been a blessing to you. Amen and amen.